Hello, chat. Hello, Dragonite. Hello, Murdoch. Slept like a statue last night. Yeah, I woke up in the middle of the night again. Stomach was still giving me problems. Grant you, it wasn't throw up problems. Stomach still decided to hurt last night. Not fun. I could probably attribute it to, uh, something else. Point is, is I'm very, very tired of waking up at like 3 in the morning. <coughs> Hey, big guy. Still have an appointment Wednesday? Yep. <clears throat> I have an appointment on Wednesday um, at like 7, so I'm not going to be streaming that day. And we'll see where that goes from there. I did was plug in my phone. Ever thought about doing a red neck up for one of your dissent commentaries? No. I don't know why I'd do that. A red neck up of one of my disowned commentaries is just a, me at one of my disowned commentaries. <laughs>
Ugh. <sighs> I think there is a distinct possibility that aliens have already been here sometime. Like, it is. A, I don't think it's a zero percent chance. You know, there's a, there's a non-zero chance of aliens already haven't been here. Um, but I don't think they did anything. If they did anything at all, they they. Well, if, if, if they showed up at all, they definitely didn't do anything. Extraterrestrial, whatever. Point is, I think there is a non-zero chance that they have shown up. But if they didn't, or, but if they did show up, they probably didn't do anything. Because if they did anything, we would have heard about it. We would have heard about it from more than, you know, conspiracy nuts and what have you. But yeah, I think there is a non-zero chance that they exist and have already been here before. Yeah. Because, like, obviously we're not the only life forms out there. We can't be. The universe is so vast. It's like, the likelihood that we are the only planet in the entire universe that has life is incredibly, like, like, it is impossibly low. Oh, 
Like, there has to be other planets out there with... with life. Now, whether or not they're advanced enough to do space travel or anything like that, that's another question. I also think that is a non-zero possibility. Just because of how vast the universe is. But again, if they wound up here, they didn't do anything. For sure. That's my thoughts about really anything aliens related. They make contact. We don't fuck it up, but I'm not missing. Oh, we absolutely would fuck it up. That's why I said they haven't done anything. If they have, if, if they have been here, they have not, they have not reached out, they have not done anything. Because we would have heard about it. Because some dumbass would fuck it up. We would have heard about it. So I think if they have been around, which I think is a non-zero probability, they haven't done anything to us. They haven't really bothered to make themselves known. Let's shoot down them space grays, Cletus! Dude, we fucking... what was it? We, we launched airstrikes on balloons already, like... There's no way. If an alien showed up... Which again... Possible. Not probable, but possible. They, they didn't make themselves known. Do you want a space friend? Dude, I think aliens would really give a lot of people, like... If... Right, okay. So if it, if it wasn't for, like, if it... If we weren't too busy, right, trying to kill them... I feel like aliens, if they were to be... Like, if they were to show up here, would really give a lot of humanity a different perspective on things. I think that'd be really cool. But, we'd be too busy trying to kill them. If they made themselves known, we'd be too busy trying to kill them. What if they were like the Daleks? Well, then we'd still be too busy trying to kill them for us to, for us to get like any sort of perspective on on aliens. The, the general point is, like, if we were to, like, if we sat down and, and, like, actually considered, or if we, like, met an alien, regardless of if they were trying to kill us or not, it would still give us a different perspective. Because on the one hand, you know, it, it shows that our lives are just one, uh, like, our lives are just one in the grand scheme of the universe, you know? It, it would show that the universe is much more vast than we ever would, like, would acknowledge. 
And so it would it would give us, regardless of if they were, you know, hostile or not, it'd still give us a bit of bit of perspective on things. It'd give us like a new um, outlook on on our lives. Now if they were trying to kill us, you know, obviously we would fight back, but you know, we'd still get that perspective. On that note, if they were trying to kill us, the other perspective that we could get uh, from aliens, you know, touching down on Earth and, and making contact with humans and stuff like that, is that maybe we're not so bad. Maybe we're maybe us humans are not the ones that we should be worrying about, which is another kind of perspective that you could theoretically get uh, get from that. And if they were good, you know, if they were good aliens, if they were nice aliens, if they came down to Earth and tried to like teach us things about the the wider scope of the universe you know then we have other things to learn from that too regardless like aliens showing up to earth would teach us something it would just be a matter of what and at the end of the day it would still give like a lot of a lot of mankind a different perspective obviously not everyone right obviously you know, there's like a, a, a handful of people who would stay stuck in their own ways. But like, I feel like a lot of people who are like more open-minded to that would look at that as like a learning experience, one way or another. And hey, if nothing else, if we wound up going to war with someone like, or with, with like, uh, aliens similar to Daleks or whatever, that just upgrades our, our weaponry. And that's also not a particularly good thing, but like, it's still something else that people would probably take away with. You know, we, we'd wind up having more futuristic guns, I guess. Shrug. <laughs> That said, I'd, I'd prefer the the alternative to that, where aliens touch down and it's just like, yeah, we're here to teach you humans things because you don't know shit. I'd much prefer that myself, but, you know, aliens are always like a, a hypothetical anyway, because the likelihood that we'll ever meet an alien is... Maybe not the highest chance. Like, I think they've... I, I definitely do think they've brushed by Earth. They have definitely looked at Earth at some point in time. But I highly doubt we would ever actually meet one. Just imagine 2045, we're sitting at a campfire with three chill ass dudes from Galactorp 9 cracking open call points. Man, it's, it's an interesting thought. Like, just an interesting little thought experiment. But, uh,. At the end of the day, it's gonna probably forever be hypothetical.
from if they were like flying from the day that Earth stood still. I have zero idea what that is. I've never seen the day the Earth stood still. Clyde was an extraterrestrial wanting to establish peace with Earth. Yeah, as I said, I, th I would prefer that. Because I think it'd be very interesting to get that perspective from a... From, like, a peaceful alien or from a pe peaceful extraterrestrial, whichever. Like, it's still... Like, it'd, it'd be a mixed response, for sure. Because, again, some people would be too busy trying to kill it. Meanwhile, other people would be trying to learn from it. Which is the same as the other example. Oh, you've no doubt brought down the mech <laughs> with all this grinding. Probably. I think I've probably defeated more of these guys than, than Magnetons, though. Sort of depends on what they look like. I don't think so. I think it doesn't matter if it's, like, if it's an extraterrestrial, people would be trying to kill it. Because, again, we sent airstrikes at balloons. Like. There's no telling what kind of bullshit we, we would wind up doing. Hey, Walk. Also, hello, Leadfoot. Hello, Sophie. Hello, Psychotic Sonic. We were just talking about aliens. We were talking about, like, what, what, uh, what do we think would happen if, if aliens ever showed up? My response is, is I think aliens have already been to Earth at one point or another. I don't, like, I feel like that is a non-zero chance. Um. But I feel like if they were, they did not make themselves known for good reason. It's ultimately what it comes down to. Because if, if they made themselves known, we would have heard about it.
spelling, there is an assessive human level of intelligence. Well, that's what I said. I, I don't disbelieve that they've, that they've shown up here, right? I think they've absolutely shown up. I think they're, because it would, it would be too little of a chance, right? So it's like there, there are, like, many planets out there in the universe, right? So there has to be, oh, there has to be a handful of them, a pretty large handful of them that have, like, some form of life, I would imagine. There's just no way that Earth is the only one that has life on it. Uh, I don't think it is a necessarily 0% chance that they have, um, that, that they have some form of space travel or long-form space travel. Uh, there's no telling, like, where... You know, technology would be now if, you know, we didn't keep setting it back. Um, I, I, I think there is a non-zero percent chance that they have long-form space travel. And if for that reason, I, I think it is a non-zero percent chance that aliens have already arrived at Earth at some point, but just, did, or, but just chose not to make themselves known. Which would make sense, because if they made themselves known, we would try to kill them. We would absolutely have heard of it. But I already, but I think that there is a, a non-zero chance for all of that to have happened, where, where, like, aliens have arrived here at some point already. We just don't know. Because, you know, we would have heard about it if we did. Human, like, we have tried to drone strike balloons. There's no telling what we would have done uh, if actual aliens touched down to Earth and made contact. That's my take on it. You can read the roadside picnic it does throw out an idea that aliens have arrived but didn't consider us as their level of intelligence, as in we were animals to them and simply flew away. That is a very real possibility too, yeah. They could have shown up like a long, long time ago, we would never know. There's a non-zero chance that they've already been here. Elephants think humans are adorable, so it's very plausible. Yeah, elephants see us like we're puppies. <laughs> Which is a really wholesome fact, frankly. Because I think elephants are cool too. <laughs> I'm 
cats might see us as cats as well? No. Cats... Cats think we're below them. Cats think we're fucking serpents, exactly. You presume cats won't think other cats are below them? Oh, they probably do! But cats think- definitely think humans are below them. Citation! I live with six of them. There's a feline hierarchy, yeah. You live it through, what's your point? My point is... Cats think we're below them. Don't act like they don't. Don't act like cats see us as equals. Head of 14 over the course of my life. <laughs> oh, I agree. Well, it is... Yeah, they do not see us as equals. They see themselves as as above us. That's just how cats are. Dude, I cannot wait for Wednesday! <laughs> God. I hope all it takes is just me taking this, this medicine, and then that'll be it. And then I can have whatever again. That'll be nice. What's happening Wednesday? My appointment. I'll finally know what the fuck is up with my stomach after 10 months. After 10 months of fucking flipping a coin to see if I throw up that night or not. 10 months of not being able to eat properly. I'll finally know. On Wednesday. Looking forward to it. Good luck. Well, all they're doing is, uh, I think all they're doing is probably putting me on an ultrasound. So they can see whether or not it's a failing gallbladder or a stomach ulcer. There's an interesting experiment where they register signals from cat's eye nerves and cats see humans as images they get in their head as closest to the image they get when they look at other cats. Huh. Weird. Yeah, after this appointment, I'm probably gonna have to schedule a dentist appointment. And... Hopefully... Depending on what... <laughs> Depending on what needs to be done, 
I'll probably have to set up yet another appointment to get it worked out. Presuming anything needs to be done about it at all. You didn't do blood work for stomach issues? I did the last time I went to the, uh, to the doctors. Like, yeah, last time I... What was it? When I, when I did my HRT, they were gonna take my blood anyway, so they figured they would also look for what might be my stomach problem. Uh, and then I got a call from the, uh, from, I think, just straight up one of the hospitals here in Colorado. It was just like, hey, um, we want to put an ultrasound on you. We're going to see what's actually up with your stomach. Will the 26th at 7 a.m. work? And I was like, yeah, for sure. Because, uh, I'm not supposed to eat anything that, that day. Well, I'm not, I'm not supposed to eat anything, like, before going to the, to the doctors. So, that's why I wanted it as early as possible. Because otherwise it's going to be miserable. So there is no stream that day. That's just not happening. No hospital tour stream, no. I'll be away from my computer. I'll figure out what's wrong with me. And then I'll tell you guys probably the next day. Probably. If I can remember. Whatever, whatever's wrong. I've still got today and tomorrow to go through, so... Fun. <sighs> That's also not necessarily untrue, Walk. I might bring my phone with me. Tweet about it, like, when it happens. Just because everyone's been kind of hearing me talk to death about this for so long, I think it's only fair that people get a chance to know. I just wish this was something that could have been dealt with before, you know? Like, months ago. Fucking seven, eight, maybe even nine months ago. Would have been nice. But I'm glad it's happening now, so I can only complain so much.
Well, I, I already know, right? Like, they've, they've already checked me for, like, any tumors or some shit. It's not cancer, I can tell you that much. It's like, I know. I have known for a while that it is not stomach cancer. But what it is, I don't know. I'm so unbelievably tired this morning. <laughs> No, it's fine, Murdoch. If I don't stream today, I'm not gonna be stream- Well, if I don't stream today and tomorrow, then that's gonna be like three days that I'm not streaming. Hydro pump. Huh? Sure. What? Ooh, shit, they forgot. 120 special. Well, I can't get rid of Surf. Aqua Jet's a physical move. Uh... No. I guess. I guess we get rid of that. Fuck with it. Yeah. We'll just go ahead and forget that, I guess. Didn't sleep well? No, I did not. I woke up at like 3 in the morning. Had stomach issues. I didn't need to throw up, mind you. But I just, my stomach was just not happy.
He's still testing it. Uh, no, but tonight was, or this last night, I guess, rather, was the first night in a bit where I've had to use the heating pad. Dude, you know what I would love? A weighted heating blanket. <laughs> that just sounds so good. Dude, a pizza also sounds pretty good, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, a weighted heating blanket just sounds super comfy. Be nice and toasty and comforted. The cats aren't allowed in my room. Too many cords and papers and shit for them to get into. They're not, a, they're not allowed in my room. your cat's names. Oh, we have a gray one named Punkin. P-U-N-K-I-N. Like, punk. For short. Um. We've got an orange and yellow one named Butterball. We have a black one named Zoom. We have, uh, I think it's called a calico, I think? I don't know, it's the weird, like, multicolored ones. Um, we have one of those. Without a tail. And we call her... Uh, we call her, uh, Bunny. And then we have, like, two black and white cats. Uh, one with half a tail. He's called Half Fire. Uh, we call Sweet Pea. Those are the six cats we have. We also take care of a stray that my mother calls Shaggy. Yeah, Shaggy's a stray that we take care of in the back. <laughs> Hamster squeaker and despicable. <laughs> Those are pretty good. <laughs> Cat names. I love how cat names fall into like two categories. <laughs> Got two strays we take care of called Francisco and Sophie. Violent or just a little guy named no in between.
But the cat, cat names are either like very silly names, very like very goofy names, or they're just like regular fucking names. Like like you name like a like a like a cat Jerry or something, right? But like you, you have Jerry and then you have like fucking Fluffernutter or whatever. And there is no in between. It's 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 those those two are the categories of of cat names. Uh, citation: My grandmother has a cat named Janet, and then we have those names. So yeah. So we, we have examples all across the, the board, all across the, the two sections of cat names. Yeah, Goofball, Fluffball, John, and Nelson. Yeah, basically. They either have just very goofy names, or regular people names. <laughs> Simple. It was imaginably stupid and simple. Oh no. <laughs> dad named one. Or your dad named one Gilligan. Yeah. That's that's kind of what I mean. Just a regular, regular ass name. There's no in between. Like, when it comes to dog names, right, dog names have, like, a special, like, category to them, almost. Like, the name Buster, like, technically could be given to a human, but when you hear the name Buster, there's a good chance you're thinking of a dog. Right? Like there's there's a specific like name like there there's a there is a genre of dog names that are just names that sound like dog names. <laughs> yeah, J Jethro again, a name that could be given to a human, but you're gonna probably think more of a dog. But with cats, it's never like that. With cats, they either have human names or ridiculous names. <laughs> And I think it's great. I think I, I love that. Rex is one of the most common dog names. Yeah, Rex is another name. It's like, technically could be given to a human. You're thinking a dog, though. Spike, yeah, Spike's another one. Butch. Butch is another one. Again, names that could be given to humans. But they're very much dog names. You know? Tiny. Tiny's another one.
Sasha, Soccer, Snowball, Spider, Ellie Mae, Frogger, Stimple Pie, Gilligan, Blossom, and Elvis. Yeah, you see! You can, you can see it! In that, like... You can see the, the, the two categories in that list. Fake Shamu, Kitty, Alvin, and Newt. In hindsight, it's super obvious. Yeah. I just, I don't... <laughs> I think, I just think it's funny that there's not like a category for cat names specifically. Whereas with dogs, yeah, dogs have like a... a category of, of names that just sound like dog names. Your dog's name was Taz. Django and Zim. <clears throat> and my grandmother uh, has had the dogs. Um, and I don't know all of them. Because I was not around for all of them. But I do know there was one named... I think... Was there one named Peaches? There might have been one named Peaches. But I also remember Tiny Princess... Or, Tiny Princess... Uh... Mitzi? Bonnie? And now... Uh... Currently they have a little... A little puppy named Chewbacca. Or Chewy, for short. Bro, I feel... Man, Bonnie was like... A handful. But like... Not in a derogatory way, it was just kind of... Circumstance. Cause I don't- I don't know if I've ever mentioned Bonnie on this stream. I know! I was taking care of Bonnie while on a Ponder stream some years back. Um... But Bonnie, uh, had... Like ep uh, epilepsy, and every now and then would have seizures. So. Who would win a billion lions or all the Pokemon? All the Pokemon. It's not a very hard decision, like. First and foremost, Pokemon have ranged attacks, which lions do not have. A lot of bird Pokemon can fly out of range of lions. Um, plus we are looking at the same series with several gods in it. Ghost Pokemon alone would not be able to hit, uh... You would not be able to be hit by lions, because lions would effectively be normal types. And all they would need to know is dark type moves, or psychic type moves. Surf, yeah, surf is a real move that would, like, hit all of the lions. Is that Like, that's... I don't know who started that conversation, but, like, it's a dumb question. Because, yeah, Pokemon easily, like... Just logistically speaking, Pokemon would win.
It's like earthquake exists, surf exists. You'd literally catch most of the lions on fire. Or electrocute them. Pikachu could win? I don't, know, I don't know. I feel like some, like, with a billion lions, right? Because that is a lot of lions. There's, there's no doubt that that is a lot of lions. I feel like some Pokemon would not stand a chance against the lions. Pikachu is one that I could see getting eaten. Raichu might be a bit, bit more of a, of a of a challenge, but Pikachu I feel like would be eaten. Raichu would probably put up more of a fight though. Pikachu just needs distance and he destroy. But we are talking about a billion lions. Like, individually, if it was, like, a billion lions versus one Pokemon at a time, the lions would have more of a chance of winning, for sure. But if it's a billion lions versus all over a thousand Pokemon, no. Nah. <gasps> the Pokemon would win hands down. Earthquake and Surf alone would be, like, your biggest, biggest, uh, arguments in favor of it. <laughs> yeah, Onyx might do fairly well, because I don't know if, I, I don't know if lions can eat rocks, but like... Yeah, exactly. Some Pokemon wouldn't stand a chance, but others are gods. Yeah. That's kind of the point. Like, it's not really much of a debate. Now, the debate would be which Pokemon survive. That is an interesting conversation point. Because there's a lot of Pokemon that you could probably make an argument in favor of, of living. Some very, very interest like some very interesting choices you could probably uh come up with. Some interesting arguments. But if it's just a billion lions versus all the Pokemon, that's not an argument. like that is not a debate. The debate is which Pokemon survive a billion lions. That is way more of an interesting conversation. And can we just all agree that uh, most water types would be fine? Because they would just be in the water. <laughs> Fucking Whale Lord would be fine. <laughs> What about a billion geese? Nah, a billion geese wouldn't win. They'd be too weak to electric types. All an electric type would need to do is wait for them to be up in the air and then just uh, thunder. And there's enough electric type Pokemon to do that for a billion fucking geese. But at least the geese would be able to get around most of most of the stuff with uh, 
that Lion's got. You fought at Goose unwillingly. Those fuckers are clever. I'm not saying they're not. But all it would take is is a handful of lightnings. Handful of bolt tackles. Thunder fangs. Like, yeah, geese are fucking assholes, but like... General point applies. We are talking about... We are talking about, not maybe not magical beings, but we are talking about beings that have specific powers that would be able to do a lot of damage at range, would be able to do a lot of damage to the earth, would be able to do a lot of damage to the air. That just normal animals would not be able to compete with. Yeah, I think, I think the main question is which Pokemon survive a billion of these animals, not would the Pokemon win at all, because, well, a billion of anything is really big. If they're all in one spot, they're not gonna live long. Sure, the Lions vs. Pokemon thing is a meme at this point. Oh, I, oh, of course it is. I just don't know why it is. Do you like any fighting games? Sure I do. I got pretty decent at uh, Dead or Alive Dimensions. I played a handful of Skullgirls at one point. I was never particularly very good at Skullgirls, but I could probably be a lot better at it now if I just sat down and played more of it. Uh, I did enjoy the little bit of Guilty Gear Strive that I played. I got really into Street Fighter Alpha 2 at one point. I was pretty into Mortal Kombat. Like, my, my family really liked getting Mortal Kombat games for some reason, but I probably shouldn't have been playing them because I was too young. <laughs> Smash Bros. is a platformer fighter, but, so, but that would still count. I do enjoy s myself some Smash Bros. On the note of platformer fighters, unironically, PlayStation All-Stars had a lot of, um, potential. Just such a shame that they didn't go through with it. Trying to play a bunch of arcade fighters in MAME and having a blast. Mortal Kombat 2 arcade is fucking bullshit. Yeah. He 
is your next phone platinum the electric gym so i'm leveling us up to 60 so i have more of a chance for the electric gym Isn't the electric gym 50? Yeah, but balancing in Pokemon's fucking strange. Balance in Pokemon is stupid. So I'd rather play it safe than sorry. Also, hey, Sims Mage. I mean, when I go up to the to the Elite Four, I want to be at least, like, what, level 75 or something? So that way I have a chance against Cynthia. At least 75? Gastro Memo will be great for this gym. Oh, uh, for sure, for sure. This example is the elite for their weird levels. Yeah, dude, love, like... The difficulty curve in Pokemon doesn't exist. It's a wall. They are just a series of walls placed up that you have to climb over. There is no gradual build-up, there is no balance. Pokemon has never been good at that. Yo! Hey, this Justin. Welcome to the chat. I hope you enjoy your stay and enjoy your lurk. All I'm really doing is grinding, so this is more of a chill stream today. Thank you for the follow. It gets worse in the Mystery Dungeon games. Oh, don't I know it, Sims Mage. I played Explorers of Sky on stream. That was a miserable experience. Explorers of Sky has gone on to be one of my least favorite games, just of all time. <laughs> I've played some pretty... I've played some pretty garbage shit. Okay, so... You're not on followers only anymore? Dude, I haven't been for at least a year or two now. Doing a whole lot of grinding streams when you have a record scratching stream. Whenever I can stream DJ Hero. Yeah, I, I mean, I know a lot of people like the Mystery Dungeon games. I just... I don't get it. <laughs> the gameplay was a fucking mess. There was not really a good spot to grind. Grinding on in general it seems to be discouraged because finding specific items and what have you is a rarity. 
the story, at least in Explorers of Sky, the story was kind of a fucking mess. With dialogue that reads worse than Danganronpa. <laughs> at times. Like, more repetitive than Danganronpa dialogue. I just, I don't know. I didn't have fun with, with Explorers of Sky. As I said, this is one of my least favorite games of all time. Which is... There is competition. <laughs> You're looking for the levels for Cynthia's team on Bulbapedia and Dam? Yeah. That's what I mean. Pokemon does not have a level curve. It just has a series of walls that you need to climb over. It's never been particularly very good at balance. That's why I would grind to at least 75. I might go more than that. I, I, just a warning. We might be grinding a lot before we actually get to the Elite Four. The rescue team story can be worse at one point. They remember, oh right, we need a story. Yeah. At least in DP and BDSP, her team is in the 60s. Yeah, I'm not... I'm not taking that risk. At least 75. I, I, look, I remember how difficult Cynthia was. I, or at least in, in, at least in Diamond, when, when I first played through Diamond, I remember how difficult Cynthia's team is. I'm not taking that risk again. So at least 75. I'm going to overlevel the shit out of my Pokemon. That's literally why I waited to get an ice type Pokemon. <laughs> Was so I could be prepared for that fucking Garchomp. Did you count that Hell House in black and white? I wouldn't know anything about black and white. I I got maybe halfway through the game before putting it down and never picking it back up. Or at least currently, that is my my view of black and white. We'll get to actually playing black and white later. It won't be immediately after I'm done with platinum, obviously, because I'm probably gonna want a break from Pokemon. But, like, maybe after I get my new computer. It's time to actually sit down and look for computers and such. I haven't actually done that yet, because I've been too worried about my stomach issues. 
But after that's done, I'm definitely gonna be starting to look for a computer. Because this thing desperately needs a replacement. Doctor's appointment comes first. She has used items in PDSP along with competitively viable stats, so yeah, she's still hard. She is the only champion that actually takes being a champion seriously, yeah. That's why I said I'm not risking it. Cynthia, I play it safe. I level up my- I overlevel my Pokemon. Like hell. If it wasn't for the XP share, raising my team would be a nightmare. Yeah. XP share in the modern games is actually really good. Whack. <laughs> Took a round of four tries, but you did it thanks to Chimeco and Lucario. Bro, Chimeco, my homie. Chimeco's a very, like. It, Chimeco's a Pokemon I don't really think about a lot until it comes up, and then I'm just like, yo, pa, Chimeco. <laughs> Leon follows slightly behind, but he has the unfair advantage of Dynamax. Yeah. Ah, uh, Charizard. The Pokemon that everyone seems to agree is overrated, to the point it shouldn't be considered overrated anymore. <laughs> that's- that's always my favorite thing, is just hearing, like, overrated Pokemon lists. Charizard, Mewtwo, Lucario... What are some others? Just the ones that, like, everyone seems to agree is overrated, and then it's just at that point you can just think about it and it's like, is it... Is it truly overrated if everyone thinks it's overrated? <laughs> Pikachu. Pikachu's another one. Just like, is it truly overrated? If everyone thinks it's overrated?
Counterculture against Charizard might be taking a 180. Well, I mean, I'm still tired of Charizard. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> I'm tired of just Charizard getting, like, the whole spotlight. As if he's, like, a second mascot to the games, right? Don't get me wrong. I'm, I, like... I, I want Charizard to take a step the fuck back. But I think the... <laughs> <laughs> the counterculture surrounding Charizard has gone, like, f so far into the everyone hates Charizard uh, area that it kind of just wraps back around to just kind of being... Well, okay, he's not all bad. <laughs> like, he's, he's... like, yeah... He's everywhere. He's definitely got more attention put on him than literally any other Pokemon outside of Pikachu. And maybe Eevee. The mascot of the series should be Pikachu and Eevee? Yeah. But like, Charizard's just there as like a secondary one, and I'm just like, I'm tired of it. Especially since the other two don't get nearly as much love. Right? If, if Charizard got this, like, if, if, rather, okay, if Venusaur and, and Blastoise also got the same amount of love that Charizard got, I could maybe give Charizard a bit of a pass, right? I'd be, I'd be perfectly fine with Charizard getting, like, the two mega, uh, mega forms, or the, you know, the, the existence of, uh, existence of one in Galar, when otherwise they're not supposed to be, you know? Stuff like that. If if Venusaur and Blastoise got as much love as Charizard did, I'd be fine with it. But they really do single out Charizard out of the entire like out out of out of all three of them, you know? And it's just like I don't like that as much. Like Charizard's just another Pokemon. He's another one of the main starters, so he's as special, in my opinion, as Venusaur and Blastoise, despite him being my least favorite of the first three. Sorry, I just like Blastoise and Venusaur more. But... I, I don't hate Charizard in the sense of, like, him being there. I just think... Why him above all the others? You know? A lot of the star f fire starters are overloved. Well, like, what is it? When Typhlosion gets brought back, right? The only reason that Typhlosion ever came back in, like, uh, Hisuian, right? Uh, was because they needed, they, they needed, like, more starters. Otherwise, if Typhlosion gets brought up, it's usually brought up alongside, um, you know, uh, for Alligator and, um... It's not bay leaf, it's meganium. Um so he'll typically be brought up alongside the other starters. Blaziken you maybe got another point there. Blaziken's also kind of spotlighted a little too much. Um The Chimchar line, not really. Chimchar line is kind of pushed to the background a lot. They don't really ever acknowledge Monfernate. Or Infernape, sorry. Monferno is the, the middle form. Um... Imbor does not really get acknowledged too much. Uh... Delphox does not get acknowledged too much. Incineroar, I guess, did show up in Smash. So I guess that would be maybe another example. Uh, Cinderace does not get acknowledged that much. And Skeledurge would not get- uh, Well, Skeledurge is still too new to really get acknowledged a ton. So we'll, we'll see how they treat Skeledurge. So, really, out of all the fire starters that are overloved, you have Charizard- Yeah, Charizard, Blaziken, and... Um... Incineroar. So I don't know if I'd say a lot of the fire types are overloved because with um because you also have Greninja, which is a water uh, a water type one. 
you have uh, Oshawott, which came back as as a water starter. And I think that's it as far as water starters go. And then grass starters get completely shafted. Because, <laughs> like, outside of Rowlet, like, <laughs> what is a grass starter? Well, I guess Grovile or Septile, whatever. I, I, I guess there's, I guess there's also that one. People really do like that one. But, like, <laughs> I don't know. As far as, like, all of the other starters go, None of them even hold a candle to how just overloved um, Charizard is. Or how, like, I guess, maybe not overloved, because maybe that's, because that's kind of along the same line as overrated, and I don't really think Charizard's overrated. But it's like, over, um, overexposed, I guess. That's probably the best way to put it. Fire seems to get most scrutiny when it comes to designs. Yeah. Yeah, overall, like, I don't think any of the other starters hold a candle to Charizard, which again, I think is unfair to Blastoise and Venusaur, who are also, like, the first starters. I just, I just don't think it's fair to put all of the, all of the focus onto Charizard, when there are two other starters that were just as beloved. Like out of the out of the first three, Blastoise is my favorite, personally. Like my choices went Blastoise, Typhlosion, Blaziken, Empoleon, Imbor. Gen six was I think Chestnut. Gen seven was uh, Decidueye. Gen 8 was Score Bunny, and Gen 9, I'm still unsure. It would either be Fire Bubble Bobble or Mascarada. One of those two, one of those two, because I'm not really too big on the the water. I do like the canonical gay rap, though. I think that's cool. Alright, later, Murdoch. Vocal fans seem to always complain about the designs of the fire starters or complain about the firefighting trio. Yeah, but I feel like on both ends, they're kind of like unfounded. Because the firefighting trio is, well, just the trio. And then as far as like the fires, uh, the, the fire starters in general. It's like, yeah, they become bipedal a lot, but like, most starters do- most starters in general become bipedal. Like, you only have, like, a small handful, like, one per generation that doesn't become bipedal. Oh, I know. I know that people get, uh, people meme about the fire starter getting a fire, uh, fighting type. It's just unfounded. It doesn't, 
Just because it's memed on doesn't mean it's correct. I actually had that pointed out to me that there's only the three. I thought there was a fourth being Score Bunny, but no, Cinderace is not firefighting. Apparently it's just fire. And I had forgotten about that. Perhaps you're just airing your grievances of how predictable Pokemon fans have become. Oh, they absolutely have been. Look, as someone who would consider themselves a casual fan of, of Pokemon, Pokemon fans don't deserve anything. Like, I know I'm playing Pokemon right now. I'm I, Like, I, I would say that I, I enjoy myself some Pokemon. But at the current moment, in the current state, with just how entitled a lot of Pokemon fans can be, Pokemon fans don't really deserve anything. Like, is there things that I would like? Sure, I would love for contests to come back. Personally speaking, I much preferred contests over the actual battling. I've, I've talked about that on stream before. It's like, yeah, I would love for contests to come back. I, I would love a generation in, in like, the Mexico slash, or, Mexico or South American regions. I think you could do a lot of stuff with those. I think adding more ice, or I think doing, like, a Tundra generation for more ice-type Pokemon, or, like, or, or just Nordic. Specifically, if we were to do a, a Norse region, we could get more, uh, ice, steel, um, and dragon types, which I think are, like, the three least used. Oh, and fairy, obviously. Fairy would also be another one you could do a lot with. Like, the four least ty- uh, four least used types you could do a lot more with in, like, a Norse region. Um, I would love, like, maybe, like, a, a, a Pokemon kind of MMO kind of thing. I think that would also be really cool. But at the end of the day, you know, these are just things that I would want. These are not things that I'm going to complain about if they don't ever happen. <laughs> Thinking as far as, like, a Pokemon MMO goes, I just think in general, uh, it would be really cool if Nintendo made, like, their own Steam or something. They'd never do it, but I think it'd be really cool if they, like, had their own Steam and ported all of their old games and such to, to that platform. That way they could, like, update games and, and not have to keep re-releasing things um, over and over again for... Like, they don't have to waste resources coming up with, like, new things to, to come out. Um, plus they'd have a better, like, they'd have a better chance at creating, like, a Nintendo Online. They'd have a much better chance of putting out their, their retros and stuff like that, which, um, would help, like, get rid of a lot of the problems surrounding, like, piracy and stuff like that. Um, you know. I think there's a lot of benefits to them making stuff like that. Uh, more of a like more of a PC thing like porting a bunch of their games to PC I think there'd be a lot of benefit to it but they will never do it they'll never do it hey villain Do 
people seem to blame Game Freak for anything when Nintendo and the Pokemon Company are higher on the ladder. Yeah. For sure, for sure. I don't know. Uh, there's a there's a lot of really cool things that I would like for Nintendo and Pokemon and such to do, but I'm never gonna hold my breath that they'll actually do it. I feel like acting like Nintendo and Pokemon and what have you should do these things the way that you want them to is super fucking entitled. Common take that Gen 5 was ahead of the curve and we need more games like them, but the reaction to Gen 5 when it came out was probably scared Game Freak from doing a game like that again. Except they literally have been doing that kind of game again. Sword and Shield was that game again. Uh, uh, S Sun and Moon was that game again. Scarlet and Violet was that game again. <laughs> They've been doing the stuff with Gen 5 for... But again, like, ever since Gen 5 was done being a thing, outside of X and Y, of course. X and Y I would not call uh, Black and White again. X and Y is more, you know, more like Ruby and Sapphire or, you know, uh, Gold and Silver. It's very, very simple. And I, I like that. I kind of, I, like, looking back at X and Y, I kind of like, um, kind of like what X and Y did. It's a very simple game. A lot of, a lot of simpleness to it. Just kind of, kind of a fun little romp, you know? Can't wait to replay that at some point, whenever I can get a chance to. Gen 6 was a very casual experience, but it was, it was a lot of fun. I liked it. Who's messaging me?
Your uncle works at Nintendo and says there's a Mew 3, but fans want to be little bitches so they'll never see it. Got allergies? Yeah. I've got allergies. It's springtime. Your sinuses wants to do the spring cleaning as well. Yeah. No, it sucks because what I used to do for um for my sinuses, what I I just have like spicy chips or or spicy foods and stuff like that, just kind of whatever I could eat, which would help clear my sinuses a little bit. Spicy stuff is good. But I can't do that right now. I can't do that this year. What with the fact that my stomach would kill me if I were to do something like that. That's probably actually why I didn't get very much sleep last night, because my stomach was hurting. But like the day before I wound up having some, some spicy salsa uh, and some, some tortilla chips. Because every now and then I ask my family to get, my, uh, get me some tortilla chips and some like canned salsa. Apparently, the last time my brother got salsa, he got like the, the really hot stuff, which was good. It tasted really nice. I really liked it, but that's probably why my stomach was not happy that night. <laughs> if I were to make a guess. Spicy food sound like an awesome, re awesome remedy right now. How about tea? Like ginger tea? Ever had that? No, I have not. My family doesn't really get tea. Dude, I just want to have spicy food again. 
I want to have spicy food and have it not fucking kill me. I want to be able to have a burger and not be upset for like two, two days afterwards, you know? I just, I just want to go back to, to fucking being able to eat again. Which is why I cannot wait for Wednesday. So get me at least started on fixing that. And this stream has finally come full circle. <sighs> or maybe we talk about aliens again. I don't know. Point is, we've come full circle. I'm gonna go ahead. You know what my Pokemon call that stream? <laughs> so yeah, as I said, um... Circle of Infinite, I don't want the stream to end. But alas, you need rest, yeah. Um, as I said, tomorrow we'll probably be back. But the day after, no stream, because that it will be doctor's appointment time. So, um, and then I don't know what's gonna happen afterwards. But in any case, I'm gonna go ahead and call that. Later, chat.